So, uh, for example, you're in a situation where you have a child of three year old that you need to find a, a toy that according to what he needs. So, for example, this kid likes to pile up uh, different toys together, but there aren't a lot in the room. Well, you need to find some for it. So the purpose of this how-to is uh, to find out a good, a good toy for the right kid and according to its age, its development, uh, the criteria of the object, or the toy, and also the category of the classification of SR. So, uh, the how-to that we are learning today it's to how to choose a toy or an object for kids in a daycare center. So we will explain all the steps. So, step one. Um, here we will be choosing the toy or object depending on the age of the children. So, uh, well, it depends of who they, like what age they are because sometimes it couldn't, it's not like adapted to them. For example, we have a, a game, a card game here that is for four year olds and up. So like it depends on how they are, because let's say, you know, reading numbers at two year old isn't like they won't know how. So it has to be adapted to the age because younger, it can also be damaging for like, let's say it's too heavy for them or it depends on what toy you choose. Step two. So step two, you look at the child's development uh, where they are at. So basically, you need to know, uh, you need to choose uh, an object that is adapted to their uh, development and, and that they are capable to use it and to play with it without uh, looking at it and not knowing what to do with it because uh, it's not adapted to them. So for example, for a young kid, uh, this is going to be used uh, just to roll around and play with it and look at the dots and maybe connect it to stuff. But like, let's say for childs that are children that are older, you can really look at the numbers and use it as the real function of a dice and calculate or whatever. So step three. So this is the step where uh, we have eight criteria for to choose like the toy or the object. So the first one, um, it has to be solid. So let's say like you have to be able to touch it, manipulate it and it won't break. So uh, for that, like, it has to be like that so that the to prevent that the children hurt themselves and uh, that it breaks and exact that they hurt themselves so it also has to be uh, shock resistant so then after we have to make sure that it is safe for the children so uh we have to make sure that the material is in good quality and it is good and there is no dangerous material that the children would hurt themselves because like we use it to prevent them to hurt themselves and um, also that the, the children can play with the toy without like a constant supervision of the adult like right beside them. Like you know the adult has to watch everybody at the, always but like not constant repetition of supervision for one children because it is too like dangerous. So that's why it has to be really safe. So the next criteria corresponds to being washable. So for example, this apple is made with a plastic that you can use soap and water. And, uh, but it's not only soap and water, the objects that need to be washable, it's every material that really washes because the purpose is it needs to be washable for the toy to not contain like bacteria and um, it will prevent from leading on sicknesses to every child. So you need to wash it currently. So uh, after that, we have the aesthetic and uh, it needs to be attractable visually so for example if you take this here it needs to be with colors and details and uh, the kid needs to be able to like want to play with it and when it looks at it it knows that the, oh yeah wow and whatever so um the purpose is really for the kid to use it and not that it will just stay in the corner and you did like a, a useless expense okay so next criteria it is uh that the children has to do the action like not the object let's say something that has like a little music but it's the, the object that turns and you just have to press a button that is not good for them because uh the purpose of something that it's the children that let's say they are going to manipulate it or like exercise a certain like let's say fake to cut it or stuff like that it will insist uh, like they will use it and make an action with their hands so they they will be learning by manipulating the objects and not the other way around 
Um, next, it has to have different functions. Uh, so let's say this farmhouse, it has different functions because the kid can just like, can assemble all the farms together. They can also like count the numbers and here also like there's one horse on the other. Let's say here there's three goats and whatever. Uh, they can also just like take one and walk the goats because let's say a two year olds they'll just see the animal and want to walk them or whatever. So uh, the purpose of that is like to make the children learn uh, different like stuff you can do with a toy or like it makes them want to use a toy differently and stuff like that and not always use it for the same thing because eventually they'll get bored or they won't want to use it anymore. And uh, yeah, so it's just like, it helps them learn also and stuff like that. So the next criteria consists to um, the sound. It has to be controllable because uh, it ha it can't be too noisy in the room because you need to um, be able to control it. For example, like there are toys that have sounds on it. You need to be able to adjust the sound like um, lower it let's say and it, if um, it doesn't make a sound directly you need to be well that's even better because directly it's the children that make the sound so for example you're playing a card game well if the kids are screaming the adult can contain the sound and everything but if let's say a toy doesn't have an adjustable sound well then it's really loud and then in the in the room it will be noisy and noise is not the best thing for the children and the last criteria consists that we have to check that it's non-stereotypical. So um, basically, as an adult that you're looking for a toy, you have to use your judgment and just like take off all the stereotypes you know or you learned and uh, grew up with and really um, include every game for boys and girls because it consists to just the concept of inclusivity and it's to purpose that every boy and every girl can play with every toy they want and um yeah so step four uh this is where it's like a classification of essor so those letters it means um different type of games so let's say the first one it's uh the rule games then we have the symbolic games that like it's let's say cooking or the the everyday life stuff then we have uh the construction or assembling games and then we have like exercise game that like mainly uses the hands so or like the feet or whatever like a body part and not like literally playing so uh we use this classification uh to let's say do a give a variety of toys to the children and to also like choose different uh, like depending on the children what they need or where they are in their development and their age and stuff like that to make them like a variation of stuff and to make them play with the material and yeah, so these uh, categories and classification are essential. To conclude, this how to choose a toy is essential for a person that really wants to choose the toy, the right toy corresponding to the age, the development, the criteria for the object, and the classification of the category for the child you're uh, looking a toy for. So um, basically, the kid of three-year-old uh, in the scenario, uh, well, this would be perfect for him because he really liked piling up objects. So if you bought this, he could first of all pile up things and then next, like she said, he can discover everything around it. So thank you.